Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United have just beaten Leeds United by 6 goals to 2 at Old Trafford. What a fantastic game that was. We was 2-0 up in the first 3 minutes. Both goals came from Scott McTominway. He enjoyed a fantastic game, you know, he was making things happen. Scott McTominway also got an assist in the game. Bruno Fernandes, he scored two goals in the game. One of them came from the penalty spot. Obviously, Victor Lindelof got his name on the score sheet. And Daniel James got his name on the score sheet. And I think he enjoyed a fantastic game. Anthony Martial, he got two assists in the game. I thought he enjoyed a fantastic game. Um, Leeds United's two goals came from Liam Cooper and the other one came from Stuart Dallas. I've just read some of the stats of the game. I think we had a good 20-odd shots in the game, created around 20-odd chances. We should have actually had more than six goals because uh, Anthony Martial, you know, he had a couple of chances in the game, should have converted them. Uh, when Edison Cavani came on, you know, he had a good couple of chances, should have scored. Uh, Fred, I think he also had a good chance in the game as well. So in reality, we should have had probably around eight or nine goals. Now... Leeds, they did have a couple of chances in the game. Obviously, you know, Rafinha had a couple of chances. Uh, David De Gea obviously made saves. Uh, Rodrigo had a chance. I think it actually, you know, came off the post. But what a fantastic performance by Manchester United. I thought all of them played well. Uh, David De Gea, like I mentioned, he made a couple of saves in the game. And Juan Bissaka, he had a good game as well. Um, he made uh, some very, very good interceptions and he made some good blocks. Uh, Lindelof had a good game, like I said, he got his name on the score sheet. Uh, Harry Maguire, you know, he did quite well. I think he also had a chance in the game that I do recall. Uh, Luke Shaw, I thought he also enjoyed a good game. I thought Fred enjoyed a good game. Obviously, McTominway enjoyed a good game. Uh, McTominway, for me, was the man of the match. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, he enjoyed a very, very good game. Bruno Fernandes has made a difference in this team. Bruno Fernandes has been at the club now for almost a year. And he's won Player of the Month quite a few times. Don't forget, he won it for November. We got uh, Bruno Fernandes for around £47 million from Sporting Lisbon back in January. But he's definitely the best signing we've made since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Marcus Rashford, you know, he enjoyed a very, very good game as well. You know, he was getting good runs in behind. And like I've said, Marcus Rashford has improved under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. You know the news on Rashford, it's recently said that in the new year we are preparing to offer him a new five year contract worth £300,000 a week. Um, his, cur his current contract runs out um, in 2023, Marcus Rashford's. And at the moment, he's on around £200,000 a week. But we've got to keep Rashford out wide because that's where he is more effective. You know, James, like I mentioned, he enjoyed a very, very good game. And, you know, that when Jan Daniel James scored, didn't he? And, you know, I think that was his first goal in a while. Um, he hasn't really played much, though, this season. And Anthony Martial, you know, he was absolutely superb as well. It's just a shame that he didn't convert his chances, but 
it was good that he got a couple of assists in the game. You know, he's had two good games now in the league, Anthony Martial, because obviously for the vast majority of this season, he has been out of form. This is Anthony Martial's fifth fifth season, is it, at Manchester United? Um, he was very, very good last season. Scored 23 goals in 48 games. He was good in his debut season under Louis van Gaal as well. Uh, don't forget, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the one that gave him that number nine shirt. Now, we obviously brought some uh, substitutions on in the game. Um, like I said, we brought Edison Cavani on. I had a feeling Edison Cavani wasn't going to start this game. But Edison Cavani made an impact when he came on. Like I said, he had a good couple of chances. Um, Edison Cavani has now come back from injury, which is very, very good. He's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. Now, as you all know, he's been charged by the FA for misconduct for the racist comment that he put on social media last month. Now, obviously, Edison Cavani... Um, could be facing a free match ban if he's found guilty. He's got until January the 4th to react to these charges. Uh, Donny van der Beek, um, he also came on in the game. And Alex Tellez, he also came on in the game. And I think he also had a chance. So Meslier, Leeds' his goalkeeper, made a good four saves in the space of a couple of minutes. So I'm just having a drink there, you know, just to celebrate this. But yeah, um, as I was saying, um, Leeds, um, Patrick Bamford, you know, he had a couple of chances in the game. Um, he obviously had a goal, but obviously it was way offside. But Leeds were just so poor today, you know, they just couldn't get the ball forward really. Uh, they give the ball away far too many times and I was surprised by that. I thought this game you know, would have been a very, very close game. I really, really did. You know, this was the first meeting between us and Leeds in the Premier League since 2004. And we played Leeds in pre-season in the summer of 2019 and we're beating them by four goals to nil in Australia. You know, we played them back in 2011 um, in the League Cup, beating them by three goals to nil. They obviously beating us 1-0 uh, back in 2010 in the FA Cup third round. Leeds obviously um, won the Championship last season. That was their first trophy in 28 years. The last trophy they'd won prior to that was the cha was the old first division back in 1992 and obviously Leeds were out of the top flight for around 16 years because they got relegated back in 2004 don't forget though, Leeds were coming into this game this evening on the back of a 5-2 win against Newcastle. Uh, but by the way, anyway, it is our second home win at Old Trafford in the Premier League this season. 
the win puts us now to third in the Premier League. So you can definitely say we are in the title race. Um, I don't see us winning the title this season. But I certainly think we can get a top four finish. And I think there's a great chance that we can win a trophy this season. I think we've got a good chance of winning the Carabao Cup. Um, I think we've, we've also got a chance of winning the FA Cup as well. And if we could get in the top four, top three this season and win a trophy, that would represent a very, very good season for Manchester United and then that would give us something to build on. So yeah, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has beaten Marcelo Bielsa as Manchester United manager. And like I said in the preview prior to this game, Marcelo Bielsa is a good manager. You know, he has got a good pedigree behind him, Marcelo Bielsa. Um, obviously, Leeds um, had what four, they've got four injuries, haven't they? They've obviously got Adam Forshaw out. They've got Diego Lorente out. They've got uh, Berardi out, but he doesn't really get in their team now anyway. And they've also got uh, Robin Koch out, who they also got during the summer. Now, I have been saying to you guys, haven't I, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer isn't the right manager for Manchester United. And if things continue like this, then my perception will change and I'll start saying, you know, he's the right manager for Manchester United. And I've been saying stuff like, you know, he's way out of his depth at the football club. But I hope Ole Gunnar Solskjaer succeeds as Manchester United manager. Solskjaer's priority is leading the club to long-term success. And definitely Solskjaer will still be Manchester United manager in the new year. Um, I think he probably will be Manchester United manager at the end of this season. This is his second full season as Manchester United manager. And I always said, didn't I, this was going to be a big season for him. He's managed over 100 games for Manchester United in all competitions. He has got a contract with us until 2022. As Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I don't know if he will see out his contract. Um, and I've also said to you before that his decision making does concern me Solskjaer's because in a lot of games he has got it wrong. But there's also games where he showed tactical flexibility as well. Um, obviously, Paul Pogba, we didn't see him play today. I actually thought he'd have started this game against Leeds. Um, obviously, there was no Mason Greenwood either. But, like I said, I have taken positives from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's tenure. Um, he has made good signings so far as Manchester United manager. He's spent over £200 million and he's endured four transfer windows at the football club. And the January transfer window will be his fifth transfer window as Manchester United manager. Uh, we've also seen a lot of players depart the club since he got recommended in. Uh, we have got rid of quite a bit of the deadwood. Solskjaer did well last season in his first full season. He got us qualification for the Champions League. Also got us third and he guided us to three semi-finals. And I also like the way he has promoted the youth. And we have enjoyed some good periods under him. We're enjoying a good period now. We must be unbeaten in his last, what, six or seven league games. Uh, we went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions last season. So there you go. And Manchester United is the third club in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial career. Um, obviously, before he came to us, he was at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder, but Mulder had a big club. And before he was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff. And he endured a very, very short tenure with Cardiff. He got sat from Cardiff because he ended up getting them relegated. And he hasn't got that proven pedigree as a manager, but reflecting now on his being at Manchester United now, he has learned quite a few things, hasn't he?
But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was a great player for the football club for 11 years. He flourished under Alex Ferguson's guidance. One of his most iconic moments as a player was 1999, obviously when he scored late on in that Champions League final to win the club the treble. treble. And that's the club's greatest achievement. Now, obviously, a lot of pressure now would have eased off Solskjaer, wouldn't it? Because he has been under pressure this season because we enjoyed the poor start to the season, obviously. We obviously got knocked out of the Champions League. But uh, we have turned things around, and I've got to give, give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a lot of credit for that. Uh, there obviously has been a lot of talks of Mauricio Pochettino coming in to replace Solskjaer. Uh, Masmiliano Allegri, he's been on our agenda a few times. Julian Nagelsmann, he's also been on our agenda a couple of times. Thomas Tuchel's been on our agenda. You know. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, don't forget, recently said that Manchester United can mount a title challenge up uh, during this Christmas period. We haven't won the Premier League since 2013, so we haven't won it now for around eight years. We are going to get our 21st title. We could actually get it under Solskjaer, possibly. We are the most successful team in Premier League history at the moment because we have won 20 titles and 13 of them are Premier League titles. You know... In the last eight years, we have been playing catch-up because obviously we've had different managers with different philosophies. Three managers have been sat since Ferguson left and that was David Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. We have spent over £1 billion on plays in the last eight years and we've brought around 36 plays in since Sir Alex Ferguson left. Now, like I said... No one will replicate Ferguson's legacy at Manchester United, but I certainly think we can become very, very competitive again. I really, really do. I think we could win the league maybe next season or in the next couple of years, but I just don't think we'll win it this season, even though we are in the title race. Um, it is obviously good that we are making plans for next year. Uh, next year, we are looking to make more signings. Uh, there has been a lot of players on our agenda. This morning, I give you the news on Moises Caicedo from Independiente del Val. Uh, Duncan Castle said that we are in transfer talks for the player and Independiente del Val want around 5.4 million. And they will demand the 20% of any future sale. He's 19 years of age and it says that West Ham are interested in him. Daya Upiamikano, he's also been on our agenda. Uh, Jack Grealish, I think we could go in for him next year. Don't forget we was him for him during the summer transfer window. Uh, Jaden Sancho, I think we'll also go in for him next year, and we could go, but we could go back in for Erling Haaland next year. So let's see what happens. Uh, we've already revealed our transfer plans. We are looking to strengthen up in four positions next year. We're looking to get a centre half in, a right back, a right winger, and a defensive midfielder. We've also got to focus on the outgoings next year uh, because he's still deadwood at the football club that we need to get rid of. I think next year we'll be looking to get rid of Jesse Lingard. Recent reports have said that Sheffield United want to get him on loan. Lingard's agent recently said that um, Real Sociedad were in talks with Link over getting Lingard. Celtic and Rangers have also been interested in him and so too have Aston Villa. Um, Odin Agarlo, I think he'll leave in January when his loan expires. I think we'll get rid of Jones next year. We'll also get rid of Rojo. I think we'll also get rid of Sergio Romero because he's now our third choice goalkeeper. 
Uh, Matic could leave next year as well. Possibly Juan Mata could. Uh, there's been obviously rumours of Brandon Williams going out on loan because Brandon Williams is now our third choice left back following the arrival of Alex Tellez. And obviously earlier on in the season there was rumours of Dean Henderson going out on loan. Uh, there's been rumours that Daniel James could leave next year. He doesn't really get in the team now, but like I said, he started today, put a very, very good performance out. Uh, we got Daniel James in June last year in a deal worth £18 million. And a lot of United fans are expecting Paul Pogba to leave the football club next year. Uh, but obviously Ed Woodward has come out several times to support Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, even though we didn't enjoy the best of starts to the season. So hopefully Solskjaer will get backed at the football club. Uh, the board has been one of the biggest problems at the club for several years, obviously reflecting now part our recruitment policy has been and obviously we have overpaid for players and you can say the board haven't backed any of the managers that we've had since Sir Alex Ferguson left. Uh, our defence still concerns me because we are still leaking goals and that's something we've got to sort out. Now, obviously, in the game against Leeds today, obviously, you know, we weren't in a losing position, was we? But in a lot of games this season, you know, we've obviously had to come from behind, especially away from home. But we've got to keep doing this, what we did against did today against Leeds, you know, we've got to start games on the front foot, we've got to press, we've got to score goals, we've got to obviously create chances and that, you know, but we've been absolutely exceptional away from home. When we beat Sheffield United on Thursday, that was our sixth successive away win. Uh, sorry, we be sorry, we became the first team to win six successive away games after conceding first in a single Premier League season. And we have won our last 10 away games in a row in the Premier League. But it's good that we've got our second home win in the league this season and we've got to start winning more games at Old Trafford because we was enjoying our worst start at Old Trafford for around 50 years. Weren't we? Now, like I've said to you, we have got very, very good players in our team. Uh, Marcus Rashford, he's a very, very good player. You know, Marcus Rashford has been part of the club for several years. Uh, Donny van der Beek, Beek, he's a very, very good player. Um, obviously, like I said, kept him on in the game today against Leeds. Uh, Donny van der Beek's made two starts in the Premier League so far, and that was obviously against West Ham. And he also made his full Premier League debut against Southampton. We paid £40 million for him from Ajax. Donny van der Beek. Bruno Fernandes is obviously very, very good as well. Uh, Mason Greenwood, he's a good player. Um, Ollie's been defending Mason Greenwood a lot this season. Um, obviously, don't forget at one point he was having personal issues. He obviously had injuries and at one point he was out with illness. At the start of this season, we give Mason Greenwood that number 11 shirt. Greenwood's under contract with us until 2023. Like I said, didn't play no part today, Mason Greenwood. Um, Edison Cavani is also a good player. Um, he's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. Uh, Fred, he's also a very, very good player. I think he's enjoyed a very, very good season for us as Fred. Um, I like the way he's kept the ball. He's showed good attacking intent. He's dictated the play well. He's had a couple of bad games all this season. We paid £47 million for him from Shakhtar Donetsk. But Tom Inway, you know, he's enjoyed good games, especially today, you know, got two goals and also got an assist. Was it just after the first lockdown that Tom Inway signed a five-year contract with Manchester United? I still don't think he's as good as Fred, though, but Tom Inway. Uh, Luke Shaw, he's also very, very good. I had a feeling he was going to start today ahead of Alex Tellez. 
Luke Shaw, obviously, um, just come back from a hamstring problem not so long ago. That's my only element of concern about him. He is too injury prone, Luke Shaw. He's enjoyed a good six years or so now at Man United. Got him for £30 million for himself, Hampton, back in 2014. You know, Alex Tellez, he's a good player. He's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Man United career. Uh, Tellez is a player that likes to get forward. He likes to put crosses into the box and he likes to get into decent positions. We got him in a deal worth £15.4 million. Um, Harry Maguire... I think he's good. He's enjoyed good games this season, Harry Maguire, where he's been very effective in the air and he's showed that ability to play out from the back. He's scored a couple of goals for Man United. He's obviously enjoyed bad games as well, Harry Maguire, where he has made mistakes and he's looked far too exposed. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment because we got him in a deal worth £80 million. Uh, Victor Lindelof. He's enjoyed good games as well. And he was good today against Leeds. Got his name on the score sheet. That was his first goal in God knows how long. Still got my reservations about Lindelof. Lindelof. He is static and he's obviously not on the same level as Harry Maguire. Lindelof's enjoyed a good three years or so at Manchester United. We got him in a deal worth £30 million from Benfica. And Juan Bissaka, he's also a good player. In, ga in the games he's played well in this season, he's made vital interceptions. He's showed some good attacking intent. He's got in good positions. He's put good crosses into the box. And wan scored one goal for Man United. And that was the 4-1 win against Newcastle earlier on in the season. This is his second season at Manchester United. We got him in a deal worth £50 million from Palace. In the summer of 2019. And got to give David De Gea credit. Because I think there's games this season. Where he has made good saves. I've got to be honest with you. And I said that. David De Gea will remain our number one. For this present time. And he will remain our number one. Probably for the rest of this season. This is his 10th season. At Manchester United. So he has been a long servant. At the football club. He's made over 500 appearances now for Man United in all competitions. But um, there has been a lot of Man United fans saying that Dean Henderson should now be our number one. So we have got good players. Um, our next game is away to Everton in the Carabao Cup. That's going to be a difficult game for Man United, Everton away. It is the Carabao Cup quarter-final. Um, Everton, in their last three games, they've beaten Arsenal, Leicester. What? All right. Yeah. Yeah. They've beaten Arsenal, sorry, Leicester and Chelsea. We've already beaten Everton once. Hey, what? We're beating Everton once this season, beating them by three goals to one. But uh, like I mentioned, Everton have got a very, very good manager in Carlo Ancelotti. You know, he's been at Everton now over a year, hasn't he, is Carlo Ancelotti? And in his managerial career, managerial career so far, he's won around 15 major honours as, you know, Carlo Ancelotti. Um, Everton obviously had Duncan Ferguson before Carlo Ancelotti. They had him in on a temporary basis. Before Duncan Ferguson, they had Marco Silva, obviously the sat team. Uh, they obviously had Roberto Martinez at one point. It was consistent under him. And bef obviously before they've had David Moyes. And Moyes enjoyed a good 10 or 11 years with Everton. Um, Everton, I think, have got a few injuries, haven't they? They've got Delph out. They've got Hamis Rodriguez out. They've got Lucas Din out. They've also got Allen out and Gabby Min of Everton. But that won't be an easy game. Um, our next league game is Leicester. I think it's away Leicester. And that's going to be a tough game because Leicester are in good form. They're beating Tottenham today, was it, by two goals to nil. A Leicester like... They're in the top four now, aren't they, Leicester? And they have got a good manager in Brendan Rodgers. So there you go. 
Um, on my next video, I will be giving you my player ratings from the, for the game. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care, God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.